No special changes in diet or exercise are required for the day before your surgery. This is a good day to take things easy and put yourself in the best frame of mind for your hospitalization. Have lunch with your family or friends. Go for a walk. You gotta remember, you're not the first one to go through this. There's been hundreds of thousands of people to go through this. The most important thing is spending time with your, your family and just relaxing, taking it easy. Tonight, you probably won't get much sleep just because you're worrying about things. The best night to get sleep is, is last night. Remember, being rested and free of stress can be very helpful for you and assist in your recovery. On the day of your surgery, you will not eat or drink. You usually can take your morning medication with a sip of water, but check with your doctor first. When you arrive at the hospital, you will report to the surgical registration and waiting room. In most cases, patients will receive a pre-admission packet from the clinic where they had their pre-admission assessment. So they know exactly where to go, they have maps to know where they go and what to expect. When you get to the hospital, an identification bracelet with your name and the hospital number will be placed on your wrist. Okay. Can you tell me your name and date of birth? Your ID should be checked by the healthcare team before providing any procedures or giving you medication. 10, 15, 55. Okay, great. If you have allergies, you will also get an allergy alert bracelet. I'm just gonna review what we plan to do today. Um, after I finish, we're gonna give you a little feel-good medicine and that the anesthesia team's gonna put in that thoracic epidural so that when you wake up, you're nice and comfortable. I'm gonna take this uh, fancy magic marker put a little X here, put my initials. So this is the general area where we're gonna be working today. Your surgical team will select a variety of options to help manage your pain. These include a patient-controlled epidural pump, a patient-controlled analgesia pump, and a local infusion pump. Some patients may receive an epidural catheter for pain management after surgery. This is a small tube placed in your back that distributes numbing medication around the nerves to your chest. Your surgeon and anesthesiologist will determine if this is the best course of action for you. This is a thoracic epidural catheter. It's put in in the mid-thoracic spine. It's usually taped to the patient's shoulder on the opposite side from the incision, so we're nowhere near it with our surgery. And then it's connected to an infusion pump that gives a very small amount of a mixture of narcotic and local anesthetic that bathes the nerve roots that are supplying sensation to the area of the incision so that your patient's nice and comfortable when he wakes up. You may also have a PCA and an epidural, which are two pumps that we use for pain management. You need to use those. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid of overdosing because they are smart pumps and you can't overdose. But we have this reservoir here that's full of local anesthetic, OK? And I have a little button here that you can push if you're uncomfortable. It'll give you some extra pain medicine. All right, you understand that? Yes. Okay, that, that little pump is connected to a tiny catheter that we've tunneled right underneath the skin down on the muscle layer right near your incision here. So it's gonna bathe that incision in local anesthesia. So if you're uncomfortable, hit that button. You can't hurt yourself with this. It can only make you more comfortable. On a zero to 10 scale, how would you rate your pain? Because that's kind of how we track your pain level. Zero is really yeah. no pain, and 10 would be the most excruciating pain you could have. Where well, would you rate it? Right now, probably one or two. OK, most. OK. You will usually be switched to oral pain medication the next day or so after your operation. You may also have some sore throat pain from the tube that was placed in your throat during the operation. Throat lozenges may help with your sore throat pain. If at any time you have questions about these pre-surgery procedures or the surgery you are about to undergo, please feel free to ask any of the individuals involved in your care. During the surgery, we do put a larger size tube in your throat to help you breathe during the surgery. Um, so the risk of you having a sore throat from it is a little bit higher than normal uh -huh. surgery, okay? At this point, you are now prepared for surgery. You will be taken to the operating room. Your family will be shown to the appropriate waiting room areas. Well, think about a nice beach or some place to relax, take a short nap. We'll take good care of it. I sure will. I'll see you in the recovery room. All right, thank you. Bye.
Here, your surgical team will again verify your name, type of surgery, and date of birth. EKG pads will be placed on your chest to assess your heart rate and rhythm. A probe will be put on your finger to monitor your oxygen rate. A soft mask will be placed over your mouth for fresh oxygen. At this point, you'll be given general anesthesia. Once you're asleep, a Foley catheter will be placed in your bladder for urine collection. A catheter may be inserted into an artery in your wrist to monitor your blood pressure. Naturally, your privacy is always respected, even when you are asleep. With preparations complete, your surgery can begin.